This is Dr. Dave Serptel, editor of Macular News, and we're here today with Kim Lay, who is from McGill University in Montreal, Canada. And she's going to tell us about the presentation that she made at Arvo 2014. Firstly, could you tell us about your current position at McGill? Sure. Uh, I'm an ophthalmology resident at McGill University. What is your specific area of interest? Um, well, with this particular project, we're interested in trying to explain the pathophysiology of uh, age-related macular degeneration. We're trying to uh, make an analogy between the skin and the eye in terms of how melanin can play a protective role against sunlight. And what, how did you conduct this particular piece of research? Well, uh, we did a broad literature review, both looking at the dermatology literature, the ophthalmology literature, and uh, histopathology textbooks to give us some insight. What were the conclusions of your particular study? Well, we found that we could make an analogy between the skin and the eye. Um, basically, melanin uh, plays a structural barrier. Um, melanin located in the skin and in the eye is superficial to blood vessels um, in the dermis and in the choroid. And by being superficial to those structures, um, it absorbs light, it scatters light, and it also acts as a scavenger of uh, free radicals. Um, we found that uh, in patients with more melanin, they were more, their blood vessels were more protected against damage over time from cumulative light exposure. So we think that um, macular degeneration could be a choroidal vascular damage process from cumulative light exposure. How does this change our uh, existing perception of melanin? Your research obviously adds an additional layer or level looking at uh, the, the choroid and vascular permeability, or vascular issues rather. Mm -hmm. um, well, <laughs> the way it stands, uh, s some people are just uh, born with uh, more melanin and they have uh, more darkly pig pigmented skin and pigmented eyes. Um, but for those of us who are more fair skinned and have lighter pigmentation in our eyes, we, um, we can try to take more preventative measures uh, to help us you know, have less exposure to UV light, for instance. So we could wear um, sunglasses, we could wear wide brimmed hats, and uh, that might offer a slightly higher degree of protection. What would be the next steps for your particular line of research? Um, so it's always been difficult to prove um, the direct relationship between light exposure and uh, macular degeneration. Um, a number of uh, large population based studies have tried, but um, probably we need to look deeper into the basic science. You know, now um, a lot of groups are culturing um, retinal pigment epithelial cells and are able to put melanin into these cells and to stain melanin and quantify it. Um, there are also new imaging modalities um, that can quantify uh, subtypes of melanin like eumelanin versus pheomelanin. Eumelanin is thought to be more photoprotective. So I think in the future, if we, you know, um, we can use these newer imaging modalities and um, new cell culture lines to better characterize um, melanin content in the choroid, perhaps you know, in the future that can lead to some targeted therapeutics or just a better understanding of the disease. What about different types of UV light? Yes, so um, both in the skin and the, in the eye, um, UVC and UVB tend to be um, absorbed more superficial. For instance, in the epidermis in the skin and um, 
absorbed by the cornea and the lens in the eye. So the light that tends to penetrate deeper is uh, UVA in, in the skin that affects the dermal uh, blood vessel layer and also in the eye. Um, UVA and blue light in the wavelength of about, you know, oh, in the 400s tends to go back to the retina and the choroid. Now clearly blue light is an issue. Uh, some researchers have looked at uh, the use of high intensity lights for patient examination and whether in fact these mm -hmm. pose a risk to individuals with low melanin. Could you comment on that? Um, there are a number of studies that have looked into blue light and uh, specifically a clinical use is intraocular lenses that are implanted after cataract surgery and although the data is mixed um, there are um, some companies that um, you know believe that, that blue light can be damaging and they've uh, created products that filter this out there are also you know certain sunglasses available on the market that not just filter UV light but also um, these wavelengths of blue light is there anything else you'd like to add? Um, well, macular degeneration is a very complex disease and it's most likely multifactorial, um, genetic and environmental. Um, but as we're still you know, better trying to understand the disease and, and, and find treatments, it, um, it's worth just doing our best to protect ourselves as much as we can from um, oxidative stress. So we can do that by better shielding ourselves from light, by um, uh, smoking cessation, uh, and um, by some vitamins that have uh, recently been proven to um, protect the eye from macular degeneration. Dr. Lay, thank you very much indeed. This is Dr. Dave Seftel for Macular News at Arvo 2014. Thank you.